Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this very exciting Mission Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the very basics of using particles inside Fusion inside Resolve 15. The Fusion particle system is very nice, so you are in for a treat. The first thing that we need to do inside Resolve is create a clip for our Fusion to read, because right now if we go into Fusion, we'll get nothing. So, it's pretty easy to do. You can either add a video clip you want to add particles to, which is probably what you're going to be doing most of the time. If you're doing more MoGraphy stuff, you can go over to your effects library in your timeline, go to Generators, go to Solid Color, I'll click and drag this in and you can of course make it any length you want. I'm just going to keep it at the default because why not? Then you can right click, go to new compound clip, call this particle tut, create. And now with the clip selected, we can dive on into fusion and get rocking and rolling. So here you see we're greeted with our standard fusion affair of media in, media out. And we can go ahead and close down our media pool because we won't be needing that. And our particle systems in fusion have three basic steps. First is the emitter, which creates the particles. Second are effectors. They might have a different name inside of Fusion, but I call them effectors, and they're things that affect the way the particles behave. And then there's the renderer, which shows you the particles. So we're going to start by creating an emitter and a renderer just to get us started. So we can right-click, go to Add Tool, and then Particles, and you can see we get all of our different particle things in here. So we've got our particle emitter, and we have all these different effectors, and then our particle renderer. So drop in a P emitter. And then control space and now we know it's called p render drop that in there view our p render see right now it's giving us a 3d view we're just going to be using 2d particles in this because it's going to be nice and simple and if we play through you can see we're getting particles born in our emitter here so pretty nice and easy i'm going to go ahead and just do one thing real quick in our p emitter go up here change the point style to blob and increase the size just so we can see what's going on a little bit better. Excellent. So now we're not going to go through all of these controls in great detail. That will be a different tutorial. But just so you know now, number is how many particles are born. Number variance makes it so it's not the same amount of particles born on every frame. Lifespan is how long the particles last before they die. So if you can see, particles are all coming on, but now particles are dying. So if we make this lifespan shorter, you can see they're sort of popping out a lot faster than they were before. And of course, lifespan variance is so they're not all dying 71 frames after they're done being born. So we'll keep this at 80 or something. It should be fine. And then we've got our velocity controls, which if you see we crank our velocity up. You see it's like wind is blowing our particles to the side. And we can, of course, change the variance, which starts to get really nice. That's a little bit too much change. You see now it's starting to look a little bit more real lifey. And then we can change our angle around how we want and angle variance will make it a little bit more like a cone, which is also cool. And of course, we've got our fake Z angles. Then we can go back in here. You can see we've got our blob control. There are all sorts of different other things here, which will be interesting in another tutorial. But for here, size over life will be a good little control for us. So if you see we bring it up, it gets it's born at size. We'll call it one. And then it goes up to size two and then fades back out to size one. Or we could even make it fade out even more. So you can see it's sort of starting at one size and getting a little bigger, then smaller. And we can do the same thing with our fade. So we'll have it fade out a bit. And then this other thing is very interesting. It's the merge control. So if we zoom in right now, controls, and you can see when the particles overlap, they get a little bit brighter. But if we change it to subtractive, they get darker when they overlap. So a good example of that would be these two particles. You can see that it's sort of gray in between them now. Well, if we change this to additive, it's white in between them. So if the particles are emitting light, it'll be additive. If they're taking away light, it'll be subtractive. So like dust is a subtractive thing and star fields are additive things. So now I've got that going. And now, you know, it's looking pretty cool. We can make it even cooler because we can start adding emitters. So we will right click, add tool, particles. And now one that you're going to be using all the time is turbulence. So I'll shift drag this in. You see right away, we're getting all sorts of extra noise going on which is very cool. So it's not just our emitter velocity that is causing it to change. It's also this noise field going around. So if we bring the strength up a bunch, see the X strength is moving side to side a bunch more. Y strength, it'll move up and down a lot more. I like the Y strength in this. And the Z strength, of course, is our simulated Z since we're in 2D. So that's looking pretty cool. But let's say that you can see the noise, the size of the waves is a little bit big right now. Maybe we want to bring that down. And we do that by increasing the density. So if we drag this up, you can see it's a lot more chaotic of noise. And then we can also make it less chaotic by bringing the density down. 
So you can see we get these big swooping noise things going on. And I'll up the P emitter amount. Just so we can see what we're doing better. So now you can really see how the turbulence is working there. And that's cool. That might be a little bit much for this. But you know, that's good. And something that you'll do a lot with the turbulence node is doing a couple different layers on top of each other. So now we've got that big one with lots of strength that is the less dense noise. And I can increase, just add a little bit more density at a lower strength. And now there's this even more complex, more natural looking noise going on, which is very cool. We'll add another quick effector in here, which would be the vortex one, but you see there are many ones to play around with. So I'd highly recommend just clicking around and seeing what happens. If you ever played the magic school bus games, you know, Liz Lizard would say click around. So that's what you should do in here. All right, so now you can see we've got this tornado going on in here. And if we move our vortex off to the side, now we get this much cooler thing of you see our particles are twisting around this. And the two main things to know about this are strength and power. And you can think of strength as like the magnetic force of the vortex bringing the particles into its field. So if we bring this up, you can see a lot more particles are just going right into this vortex and aren't being thrown out. If we bring it down, they're not being brought in as much at all. They're actually going backwards. So... Is that and then we have power which is sort of like the speed of the vortex so right now it's pretty fast we can bring this down you can see it's a much less powerful vortex zeros too small there we go and if we bring it way up it'll speed way up and whoa hyperdrive so that's looking pretty good we'll move this around some just to get what we're going for here until it looks good. And you can, of course, change the size also. So I might do that even a little bit more until we get something that we like. So we'll call that good for now. So we don't need to worry too much about the pRender node in this basics tutorial because we already have uh, most of the things that we want done in our pEmitter node as far as the aesthetics of the particles go. So the main thing just to know is 2D. So now this is looking good, but we don't have a ton to show. So we'll go ahead and just do a little bit of compositing to make this look a little bit cooler. So we can merge this into our current setup here by adding a quick little merge node. Merge and drop this in. And now our particles are gonna be on a black background if we view our media out. So there we go. That's looking pretty nice, but let's get a little more complexity going. So what if I want to make two little spirals like a galaxy type thing? What you could do is, you know, duplicate this whole system and, and then merge it in again and rotate it around. Or you can just use a transform and another merge. So bring P render out into there, transform out into there, transform angle 180 and of course you can do this you know four times if you want to and do them 90 degrees each but you see we do that now look at this this is a cool thing it's like an infinity thing you can use this for like a logo who knows so that's looking pretty good and i'll just add a couple glows on top of it and we'll call it you know radical sabbatical so glow that's looking pretty good the default i'll add a soft glow also and I'll bring this gain down a bit. Just sort of like some dust in there. We'll put some more particles in this. So it'll take a little bit to render, but that's fine. So that's looking pretty good. The only other thing I might do is just add a little bit of chromatic aberration. Just around there, bring it down a little bit because you don't want to overuse it. You just sort of want to make it feel a little more glowy and of course we could keep on doing more compositing in here but also remember we're in resolve so we can hop over to our color page if we want to and we can you know add some goofy colors to this but before i do that i'm just going to render this out in fusion real quick 
because I'm currently on CPU only in Fusion to help try and increase the stability a little bit. And recently Fusion's been behaving a little bit better, so that's nice. But even in the tutorials where it was crashing all the time, it was on use CPU only. So hopefully we'll be able to get the GPU back in and all these particles will probably be in real time. Nice, look at this. Real quick, rocking and rolling, ripping and roaring. Excellent. So now I can go back into our color page now that it's all rendered and it'll play back much nicer. And there we go, that's looking nice. So we'll just real quick do some quick little, little goofiness. Alt-O, create an outside node. And in this guy, we will create a little linear qualifier. It'll make this guy you know, a little bit warmer up here and our outside node will make it a little bit cooler. Maybe we'll even change the brightness around some so these are a little bit brighter. Maybe these are a little bit darker. Add some more brightness here. Nice, rocking and rolling, those are looking cool. And then we'll make it even more glowy and insane. So we will add a quick little aperture diffraction. Nice, that's looking fun. That's way too much, we'll bring the brightness down some. And we'll change the chroma shift around just to get, increase the interest a little bit. Get that rocking and rolling. Nice, that's pretty. And then, actually before that, I'll hit Shift S and we'll add a lens distortion. And we just want this to be like it's zooming right at us. And that's fun. So we can just add a quick little LUT on top of this. Go over to our LUT browser. Shameless plug for Swiss LUTs because I do use these a good little bit. We'll go over to one of the cross-process ones because I think those will be cool for this. That's too much. That's too much. Um, does this have hipster ones? It does. Nice. There we go. That's more of the flavor I was going for. And then we'll just bring it down a good little bit. And then add another glow on top of it to bring the brightness back up. It'll make this like a like a pink, just for fun. Brightness. Oh, this would be really fun to do HDR, but this is not going to be an HDR tutorial. Let's bring the spread out a little more. There we go. And now I've got a cool little particle effect that oh, it'd be really nice to have this like zoom in also some. You just keep adding more stuff on top of each other. You could stop watching this a while ago. If we're done with particles, now I'm just playing around making more work for myself in editing, which is always fun. So go to this guy. Uh, yeah, this will be good. Go to our node sizing, add a zoom keyframe. This is node one, keyframe, zoom, and then go to the end, zoom, bit and also rotate it and go back and bring our zoom back to one rotate to zero rotate is it zero zero and yeah place 13 and there we go now i've got a cool little particle effect that wasn't really that hard to make and we use both the Fusion and the color page, bringing in all of this synergy together. Oh, it feels good to, to have Resolve 15. So much fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Uh, be sure to share anything you create with this on, you know, on the socials. I like seeing what people make. So Instagram is good. Twitter is good. Facebook is medium because I'm bad at the whole marketing thing. Speaking of which, go over to mesomedia.com slash products where you can get 15% off the whole store if you type in the code RESOLVE15 at checkout. These 15 days of RESOLVE15 are really just zooming by, for me at least. I don't know about you guys having to watch all this stuff, but making it's a whole lot of fun. And I think that's all I'm going to ramble on about. So once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.